Hello and welcome to today's tutorial where we'll be installing SonarCube version 9. For those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Dinesh and I create tutorials for all things related to platform engineering as well as DevSecOps. So what are we going to be doing today? So today we'll install SonarCube. There are some uh, prerequisites. So we do want to make sure that you have a virtual machine running Ubuntu Linux 22.0.4. Today's installation will actually be uh, deploying SonarCube using a PostgreSQL database. There is an internal database that comes with SonarCube. It's not recommended for production environments, and it's quite straightforward to set up, so we'll do that in today's tutorial as well. We'll also use a version of Adoptium's Java. Uh, Ubuntu does bundle OpenJDK 17. I just prefer to use the Adoptium version. Uh, this is personal preference, so please uh, Feel free to ignore this step if uh, that's something that you don't want to do. Next, we'll download the latest version of SonarCube. We'll configure SonarCube to make sure that it cuts to our database, set the username and password, as well as the JDBC connection strings. So before we go ahead and dive into installing SonarCube, let's talk a little bit about what SonarCube is and some of the use cases. So SonarCube is a self-managed automatic code review tool that helps you deliver clean code. So what does this mean? This means that as you're building your code and you're going through the development process, we can ensure that there are no bugs being introduced into your code. We can also check for any security vulnerabilities. And this is good practice. It also integrates seamlessly into existing workflows. So you can start detecting those uh, potential issues uh, through a continuous inspection of your project. Now, in future videos, we'll integrate SonarCube into our CI build pipeline. Uh, there's going to be uh, an upcoming video that's going to cover a complete DevOps pipeline. So we'll start from developing some basic Java application. We'll go through code scanning. We'll go through some static scanning all the way through the entire life cycle. So please if that's something of interest to you, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the notification when that video comes out. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that our operating system is up to date and running the latest version of uh, all the patches. So let's go ahead and sign into our virtual machine. And we can run uh, an apt update followed by an apt upgrade. OK, so we can see there's a couple of packages that have been kept back, but uh, most of them have been already upgraded. So we're in good shape. So let's quickly also make sure what version of Ubuntu we're running. So we can look at the ETC OS release. We can see here that we're running Ubuntu 2204 uh, LTS. So it looks like we're in great shape. So now let's go ahead and uh, do some installation. So the first thing that we want to do is head over to the gist that I've provided. So you don't need to copy any of these command down commands down. Just go ahead and uh, Watch the video in its entirety, and I will be sure to provide a link to this gist uh, in the video description below, uh, so you don't have to remember any of these commands. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to install Postgres 15. Ubuntu uh, 22 doesn't have uh, a default package for version 15, so we'll need to install it from the Postgres repositories. So in order to do that, we need to get those repositories configured update our repos, and install Postgres. So we can simply do that by copying and pasting the commands that I've detailed here in the gist. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's update our repositories. And then we'll install both the Postgres database as well as the contrib package. OK, so once this is installed, we want to make sure that we enable Postgres to start when the system uh, reboots. So this should just take a, another second or two here. And as soon as this completes, we'll go ahead to the next step. Perfect. So let's go ahead and enable Postgres. 
Perfect, so now we have a fully functional database. The next step is to set up a database for SonarCube. So in order to do that, we need to first set a password for the Postgres user. So let's go ahead and quickly set a password. We then need to change to that user. And then we need to create a user uh, within the database. So here we're going to create a user called Sonar. Again, this is just um, a user that I'm using. You can feel free to change this. Uh, same with a password. Uh, be sure not to, uh, to use a weak password. And this is just a demo tutorial, so I'll be keeping it very simple. So next we need to sign in. So to do that, we can just use PSQL. We're then going to um, change the password for the user that was created. So we're just going to call the username Sonar, and we'll keep the password the same. The next thing that we need to do is create a database and specify the owner. And then we want to make sure that we grant all privileges to that database to this Sonar user. And we can exit out of the database, and then we can also exit out of that shell. Great, so now we have the database set up and ready for SonarCube. The next thing that we want to do is install Java. As I mentioned earlier, this is an optional step. If you prefer to use OpenJDK 17 that comes bundled with Ubuntu, please feel free to go ahead and skip this step. So in order to install the Adoptium version, which is the version I prefer, we can follow these commands. So let's go ahead and become root. We want to go ahead and make sure that we have the AT, uh, sorry, the APT transport HTTPS package installed. We'll need to create a keyrings directory. We'll then need to add the repository for Adoptium. And then finally, we can go ahead and install our JDK 17. So it is possible for you to have multiple versions of Java installed um, on your uh, Linux virtual machine. Uh, there's a command that I've provided here, uh, which is update alternatives. And then you specify the config uh, that you would like to specify an alternative for, in this case, Java. Since this machine uh, only has a single version of Java, it'll return uh, with an error, but if you've got multiple versions installed, you can run this command to set a very specific version. So I'll show you what, what happens on my system, but you'll get slightly different results if you've already got a version of Java running uh, in your environment. So here you can see that there's nothing to configure because there's only one version of Java. So let's check that version and make sure it's running the version that we indeed expect it to be. And we can see that it is running OpenJDK 17. Great. So now that we have Java installed, there are a few limits that we need to make sure are set properly for this virtual machine. So in order to do that, we need to edit the limits configuration file, which is located in etc security. So we can provide, uh, so rather we can copy this command and just go all the way to the bottom of the file and paste in uh, the values that I've defined here in this gist. So we can do that. There's also one additional setting that we need to do. Um, so if we scroll down here, it's in the sysctl.conf. So let's edit that file. Go all the way to the bottom. And then again, just simply copy and paste the value that I've provided for you. Okay, so now that all the limits are set, we do need to reboot the virtual machine to make sure that they take effect. So let's go ahead and reboot that virtual machine. It'll take just a, a few seconds for it to come up. So I'd like to take this opportunity. Um, if you're enjoying what you're seeing so far, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Uh, I do encourage you to subscribe to the channel. I'll be releasing uh, a complete DevOps uh, tutorial where we walk through the entire life cycle. So if you don't want to miss that, please go ahead and subscribe. Okay, so let's see if our machine is back and we can see it is. So let's go ahead and sign in. Perfect. So the last thing that's left to do is to actually install SonarCube. So as of this recording, um, version 9.9 .9 is the latest version. 
Uh, if you're watching this recording in the future, you may want to uh, just check on the downloads page at Sonar Source and see if there's a, a later distribution available. For now, we know that this is the latest version, so let's go ahead and download that. And then this is a zip file, so we want to make sure that uh, we have unzip installed. So if you don't have unzip installed, you can install it with, uh, with this command. The next thing that we want to do is we want to unzip the package that we've download, downloaded and um, output it into the uh, opt directory. Then what we want to do is we want to change uh, the directory that was just created, uh, which will have the, the version uh, and the release um, into just a, a plain folder called opt sonar cube. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, if we take a look in the opt directory, we can see that there is a sonar cube directory, but it's currently owned by root. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's create a group called sonar. Let's create a user called Sonar, and we'll assign it to the group Sonar that we just created. And then finally, let's change the permissions and the group settings for this folder. Great. So now we can see that we've got uh, Sonar Cube extracted into the opt directory, and both user and group are Sonar. Now we need to make sure that we let SonarCube uh, know to use the Postgres database that we've installed. In order to do that, there's uh, some settings that need to be adjusted in the sonar.properties file. So let's go ahead and take a look here. And if you scroll down just a few lines, you'll see this user credential section. So we need to uncomment both the JDBC username and password. And then here is where you would specify the username and password that you'd created. In our case, we just called it Sonar and same for the password. Now we do need to add a connection string. So in order to do that, we can copy directly from this gist here. So let's go ahead and copy this line. And again, this is basically saying that we're gonna use JDBC to connect to Postgres. Uh, we installed it uh, on our local machine running on port 5432, and the database that we created was called SonarCube. So let's save that. The next thing that we wanna do is we also, just like we did with Postgres, is we wanna make sure that SonarCube starts uh, when a system is rebooted as well. So let's go ahead and create a service for that. So we can create this sonar.service file. We can then just copy and paste uh, this block directly into that file. So let's paste that. And the last thing that's left to do is just to go ahead and start Sonar. We will we'll go ahead and enable it, and then we'll monitor the status. So let's go ahead and start our Sonar Cube instance. Let's enable it to make sure that it starts and stops. And then let's monitor the status. So here we can see that the sonar.service is active and running. Sometimes during the first installation, it may take a few minutes for it to initialize. Uh, we can follow along uh, to check when the service is fully up by looking at the sonar log. So let's take a look at this sonar log. And we can see that it's, um, it's still launching the, the web process. And if we give this just a, a few more seconds here, we'll see, we'll get a sonar cube is ready uh, status. So there we go. We can see that it's gonna be using the default administrator credentials. By default, the username is admin and the default password is admin. It will require us to change that on our first sign in. So great, we can now see that sonar cube is operational. Now, SonarCube by default um, will run on port 9000. So in order to access its user interface, we need to uh, move on over to a web browser. And then from the web browser, let's go to the IP address of our virtual machine, followed by port 9000. 
So here we can see that it's now asking us to sign in. So the default username, as I mentioned, is admin and the same with the password. And then it forces us to change that. So again, I would strongly encourage you to set something that is secure here. And that's it. We now have a fully functional Sonar Cube that is backed by a Postgres database, which means that you can use this in uh, production environments. There's probably some additional settings that you may want to take into consideration, uh, like externalizing that Postgres database. Um, but that should be uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, as I mentioned in future videos, I will be integrating this Sonar Cube into uh, a DevOps pipeline. So please, if you enjoyed uh, this tutorial today, give it a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment if you've got any questions. I'll uh, be going through the comments and answering questions that may come up. Uh, and then subscribe to the channel so you get notified uh, when uh, additional videos are released. Appreciate your time and hope everybody has a great day.